Hey guys, Adam from Equipped Indoor. So this is going to be a unique video, taking a break right now before this weekend, and kind of an introduction to some equipment slash a discussion topic. So the, the piece of equipment itself is the Task Kit from Lansky. That stands for Tactical Apocalypse Survival Kit. And uh, we'll go over that a little bit here in the near future. The, but the reason I want to start out with this discussion, now this kit is not going to be for somebody who is a professional kit builder. So if you are, don't watch the rest of this video. All right. Unless you're looking for a piece of equipment to purchase a loved one to start their journey in preparedness, and we'll go over that point here in a second. But the, the problem with any kind of survival kit is they're expensive. I mean, anybody, if you look back and count every dollar that you put into a good kit, you start to realize you put several hundred dollars into this. And I've had a good conversation with my good friend Doug Ritter, and he, uh, of course, you know, sells survival kits, designs survival kits, AMK. And he's done that for a good long while. We had a discussion a few years back why nobody ever makes a really big, bulky, heavy-duty survival kit. And the problem is, is that the folks who are really into that also enjoy putting them together. And so they're, they're less likely to spend all the money in one foul swoop. And then the other thing, too, is when you start putting those together, a really good kit, you kind of, you know, add the price of the kit really, really quickly. For example, you know, a simple knife. To get a good knife, you're going to be spending anywhere between, you know, 50 to 100 bucks for a heavy-duty, beefy survival knife. Now, you can say, oh, I can go buy a $10, $15 Mora, but, you know, there's a, there's a certain amount of skill set that comes that's involved with something that's, you know, inexpensive a piece of gear. Not to say it's not good. You guys know I love my Moras. But with that said, you know, after buying a good, you know, heavy-duty tarp and some, if for shelter, and a good canteen kit and a good knife and some good cordage, you're going to dump a lot of money into a kit. And for people out there trying to, you know, make a buck in commerce, that's just not going to happen. That's just not how it works. You know, you got to be able to have some room in your margins to sell your product to make money to continue to stay in business. And so there's not really many companies out there that are making survival kits for that reason. Now, there's a couple of kits out there that are in the, you know, anywhere from the four to $800 range. And that's a big chunk of change to, to make a purchase. And most of the time, people who are using these items to go out and do some outdoor adventuring as well want to buy it one piece at a time. And so then again, you don't have the whole kit for sale or any many options for that. So that kind of brings us to this. And like I said before, if you're somebody who is into survival kits, I'll tell you right now, this is not going to be one of those things that you're going to be terribly excited about. But if you're somebody who's into survival and you have a family member who's not into it or another kind of loved one or somebody who you want to start initiating into there or, or help them build a kit out for, for a, a low price um, to or a reasonable price, I shouldn't say low price, a reasonable price, and to start them on their preparedness journey, this might be the ideal thing for you. And that's kind of the way that I'm approaching this. I'm approaching this for the value of the items inside, how well-rounded the items are, and the quality of them. So off the bat, that's kind of the discussion right there. How do you get people who are not yet into being prepared to be prepared? And unfortunately, you know, because of TV and the media, you kind of get people looking at you kind of cross-eyed like you're a crazy nutcase sometimes. And you guys know it's not about you know, being fearful or spreading feel, fear. It's about having the self-confidence that you're prepared and you know that you can, you know, get out of any, any undesirable situation or you can be more prepared for an undesirable situation. And that could be anything. That could be a fire in your area or an earthquake or tornadoes, all this stuff that's going on right now in Oklahoma. I mean, those people, if you had, you know, pieces of equipment to grab and go and get your vehicle out with a short notice, you have something to get you through that time period. And so that's kind of what we're talking about here. How do you get people into it and to value those skill sets and having a little kit like this, you know? And that's kind of where I'm, how I'm approaching this. So guys out there, I know there's going to be some dialogue like, oh, Adam, why are you doing a kit like that? You make much better kits, yada, yada, yada. That's not the question. The question is, are the pieces of gear in here sufficient to start somebody's journey, to get them aware of what to do, and they can start building their own kit? There's a lot of space in this, in this kit, and there's a lot of holes in this kit in regards to what else you would need, but for the time period, it's pretty well-rounded for a pre-manufactured kit that's under the, the, the $300 mark. It's actually under the $200 mark. It's actually $199.99. So, without further ado, let's jump into the kit. So, Lansky called me up a while back. They've been speaking about this to me, and I just got it. I've had it out a couple times, just kind of looking at the piece of equipment and kind of deciding which way to go about this. And I can say right now, there's definitely some some issues I have with this. The main one is there's no kind of cook kit or, or canteen or anything like that in this kit. So that's the one thing that I'd like to see. But you know, you can get some of the platypus bladders and stuff like and stuff like that in here to store water. You do have a water filtration system, but that's kind of the big thing that kind of jumped up at me out the front. Uh, but let's start with the exterior. The uh, the bag that you get here is a proprietary bag that Lansky has designed 
to tell you the truth, it's not a bad little backpack. It's got nice areas, so you don't, you know, you have some air that comes through there. It has a sternum strap, and the nylon's not that bad. A couple extra pockets. There's some compression straps around here, and there's a couple pieces of Molly webbing, or Pals webbing to throw. Maybe a, a, you know, something else. It's not covered with Pals webbing, but you don't really need that. And then it's just a, this one main pocket up top here. It's not split into a bunch of little pockets, and then you have this one pocket in the front here, as you guys can see. Now I've kind of already thrown a couple extra items in here. So let's kind of go over what comes with the kit. Here's some extra 550 cord, which does not come with the kit. But like I said before, uh, you know, I'll show you what's in here. So this is the piece of paracord that you get. So you get some cobra weaved uh, paracord bracelet. It's not a bracelet that has anything fancy on it. Like you know, some have like I've seen now some flint steels or some handcuff keys or you know this set and a third. Just a normal buckle bracelet. And now these have become more of a kind of a fashion statement nowadays. I see a lot of people using this. I see these sold at like 7-Eleven nowadays. Everybody's selling these. These are really popular. Uh, but you have about, you know, 18 feet worth of paracord in here. It still has the uh, guts in it. So you, I assume it looks like this is real deal paracord. It's not bad quality, but this is all the paracord you get with it. While, you know, this will help you out in a pinch, I do wish there's some more paracord in this kit. But then again, you spend seven seven bucks and get a hundred foot hank of paracord you'd be squared away so that's the first purchase there is some good amount of padding in here you do have a small little key chain, chain ring and then two little nylon pockets also you get this task survival instruction manual this has some very you know very simple uh, water purification stuff it has a solar still it has some simple loops some simple snares some shelter, some uh, firecraft suggestions, and uh, a couple other urban survival tidbits. You know how to how to pick a lock with an antenna, and it has the little zombie section in the back. I know they're kind of being funny with that, and zombies are all the craze. And maybe that's just for for SEO and search engine optim you know, search engine type stuff. Throw the zombies in there to get more hits. So, all in all, not a bad little pocket. One other thing I like about this pack, it doesn't scream paramilitary, it just looks like a black backpack. So if somebody had this for their everyday carry pack, it wouldn't get that much attention. Unless you start throwing some uh, Velcro morale patches on here like me, then you might get a little more attention than you need. So we have some other compression straps right here. They have some Velcro tabs to keep the straps down. And then you can open up the rest of the bag. One other thing I forgot to mention, there is a hydration area in this bag. Just flip that around real quick. Put that right there so you can put your hydration. Actually, I've kept all the little manuals and stuff that comes with all the items in here thrown in here so I can use that for my research when I do my final review of this. And there's a little hanger there as well. Hang the bag up. So let's open up the bag. Pretty simple. Right here, you got a mesh pocket on the flap, and then you got a couple of dividing areas in the bag and we'll do some closer shots of this guys I just kind of want to give a quick overview we have an event scheduled this weekend we'll be shooting a test and review of this bag so first off let's start with the, the heavy gear here we have one of these Lansky little emergency axes uh, about a quarter inch steel quarter inch thick piece of steel the edge on it wasn't that bad feels pretty good now these asset handles are really really rough they're textured um, some kind of you know composite material that's kind of like rough rough sanded to get some grooves in there to give it a little bit of texture it doesn't it doesn't feel bad in the hand but we'll take this out and uh beat it down a little bit and see how well it does of course it's got a, a key here to i guess open up a fire hydrant or something i don't know i'm not a uh I'm not a firefighter i'll have to ask robbie or one of my good firefighting buddies exactly what you can do with that so that's the the first main large cutting tool for our water purification, we do have the Life Straws. The Life Straws, we actually got a couple of these for giveaways uh, from Life Straw themselves. These are very cool items. Of course, you don't have a container in this, but you can drink at, straight from the stream in this with this thing. And these last for a significantly amount, significant amount of time. I don't know exactly. We'll get you guys all the uh, particulars on that in here in a minute. Let's see if it says it on here. So about a hundred, a thousand liters of water. So that will go a long way. Now, of course, it's Lansky, you have to have some decent sharpening stuff. So they did throw the puck in here, which is a pretty awesome uh, sharpening stone for an axe. And like I said before, 
You guys have heard me. I like a small axe with my kit. I have a little wildlife axe I use for my bushcraft adventures, and it's great. It fits in my cargo pants in my pocket. Just the, the handle sticks out a little bit, and uh, this is a great little item. Keep it sharp. A dull axe is very dangerous. Let's see, then we have so we have this pocket right here. Now the Lansky flashlight. It's actually a, a not a bad little flashlight. You guys can see the parabolic lens there. So you're able to focus this until you see the emitter makes a square almost, and I could probably, if I can get it on it, but you can see it how, how it's getting to be squarish, well it looks still round, there's too much bleed over, but a nice little flashlight, this is actually better quality than I thought it was going to be, I mean it is aluminum, it doesn't have like the, it doesn't feel as tightly constructed as something like a 4.7 or something like that, or you know, obviously not a surefire. Uh, but it's not a bad little flashlight, and I do like the fact that you can you can dim it and focus it in. So yeah, zoom in and zoom out, dimmer. Even though I guess it's not really a dimmer, but nice little flashlight. Got a little rubber ring here to hold it this way. Decent belt clip and a lanyard. So the flashlight, I was actually presently surprised. Then we had this little jobby. So we have a bottle opener, which is going to be important in some kind of survival situation. Uh, this little guy has some uh, centimeters and millimeters. And then if we unscrew that, we actually have a ferro rod. Now one complaint I've had about this already is this is not the best striker for this, as you guys can see. I'm not really getting you know, super awesome flames, but it's not that bad. And then this right here has a compass in it which I don't know how accurate it is since this is metal. So I'm going to be testing that out. That's, that was my first instinct. It was like, oh, I wonder how, how well that's going to work. And you can wear this on your neck if you needed to or tie it around something. I'd probably uh, fish this around my bag pretty, pretty well. The chain, you know, these little beaded chains, they're not that bad. They, they, can, uh, they can break, but usually you feel them if you break them. We got a little pocket Lansky sharpener. Now this guy, not a bad little item. Got a little diamond cone rod there. You have a carbide and a ceramic and then a serrated ceramic bar. So, not bad little little thing. This piece right here is kind of flopping out on me. You kind of got to seat it up in there. But you guys can see that guy. So we already have two sharpening devices in here. And that's pretty much it in that pouch. And then in the zipper pouch, we have our tools that it comes with. So this Lansky, Lansky pocket knife, so very clip point with some uh, pretty hefty serrations. I think this is like a 440A steel, stainless. The grip doesn't feel bad. Simple lock back but I would want something a little bit more hardier for my blade and less serrations. I'm just not a big serration guy, you guys know that. Decent case that you can put on your belt. You see all your gear is nice and uh, taken care of. And then we have a multi-tool set, also by Lansky. The LS. We do have a bit kit that comes in here. These are spring-loaded, very similar to some of the Gerber stuff that I've seen. And the construction on these don't, don't look half bad. We'll get out there and uh, give it a whirl and see how well they all work out. But just your normal tools. If I can get them out. Serrated blade, a little uh, awl, a file. Normal blade. Could use an extra edge on there and some screwdriver bits. And that's about it, fellas. That's the uh, the basis of the kit. Now, you do have tons of room in this kit to add a lot of extra material, and that's kind of the idea of this kit is to give people kind of a basis to start on, not not dropping a bunch of money in a you know a good. Door a bag or something like that's going to cost you almost the price of this whole kit. I mean, I have one of my 
one of my uh, Hazard 4 bags, which costs about 150 bucks. So, the items involved were, were they're, they seem to be hardy enough, they're not as refined as some of you guys like your, your uh, gear. Uh, but we'll see how this, this equipment not holds up in the very near future. So I'm just going to pack this guy back up. And I kind of want to hear your input, guys. I mean, this kit might not be the ideal thing for you. You guys might, like I said before, be uh, surpassing uh, your kit building skills and already invested the time and money into building something a little bit more sophisticated. But do you think that this idea is pretty sound for somebody who's getting into uh, survival to start off with and they just kind of want some base equipment to have a foundation to build some stuff off of it. And that's kind of a difficult task. That's the biggest problem that I have. I got some people, especially family members and friends, that kind of look at me sideways sometimes when I'm talking my E2E stuff. But of course, their comment is, well, Adam, I'm not going to invest the time and stuff, but I know where to go when the, the crap hits the propeller. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can get here. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So that's the uh, the conversation for today. And, and uh, keep an eye out for the Lansky uh, task cure kit. Uh, we'll be doing some tests and review probably this weekend. Uh, we have a little event equipped indoor little camp get together that we're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff. There'll be some uh, instructors there doing some free training and everything in Frederick, Maryland. So that's going to be fun. And I'm sure they'll be doing some giveaways there as well. Test this out. And then you guys keep an eye out because we'll be giving this away in the near future as well. I'd like to thank Dan Lansky for sending this to us. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll do it justice. And let me hear you guys' feedback. And you know, one thing I could say is Lansky was very interested to get the feedback of the community because they do want to make a really nice, refined survival kit that will start impressing upon those how important preparedness is and to, to be better prepared. Uh, so we may see some uh, suggestions that come from myself and you guys out there that we can forward to Lansky and see if they can uh, follow through with that and even build a better kit. All right, guys, Adam from Equipped Indoor. If you have any questions or comments, please email me at adam at equippedindoor.com. You guys take care. Be safe out there. Remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared. Thanks.